The Small Business Show, episode 231 for Wednesday, July 10th, 2019. Hey, folks, and welcome to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show that is, you know, BFA, small business. Sponsors include textexpander.com slash podcast go.co slash SBS and the alternative board.com slash SBS. We'll talk about why you want to go to all of those places or why you've already gone. Cause you're a listener. So you know that just going to those URLs actually supports us. Cause it, it, that's what our job is, is to point you to our sponsors. And then after that, it's between you and them, but you've already gone there. We'll tell you why you've already gone there in a few minutes for now here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And out on the shaky West Coast, I'm Shannon Jean. How are you? I'm good, man. Yeah, you. Uh, we've had thunderstorms here, but you've had far worse out there, or at least well, south it, you of know, you, far, right? Yeah, far enough away. I was up in Tahoe last weekend, uh, you know, with family for the the great Freedom Fest that we have up there. And so we didn't, you know, of course, feel anything out there centered kind of right. Southern California and a lot of stuff. But yeah, my cousins are down there and yeah. everything was shake, shaking and moving. So uh, yeah. it, those it, are big earthquakes. So, yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, hey, so uh, what are we going to talk about on today's show before we get started? uh, Let's see. I have actually I have a great story to tell about rewards programs and why they even the ones that you think you should ignore. Maybe you shouldn't. Um, And then we I, I came across a very interesting thing about vetting uh potential business partners. And nice. I'll leave it at that for now. That's great. And then we got a question in, right? Yeah, we have a question that, that a very important topic that you want to stick around and uh, and listen to. One that I hope all of us can never have to worry about except in listening yes. in this show. Yeah, that's yeah, correct. Sure. But first, <laughs> but first, our first sponsor is Text Expander at textexpander.com slash podcast. That's where you go to get 20 percent off of your first year for this fantastic app slash service. Shannon and I both love this. We couldn't run our businesses without it. What Text Expander does is, well, from a big picture, it gives your productivity a boost by taking all of those things that you type over and over again or go and copy from somewhere and paste and tweak. Text Expander takes care of that process for you. You put all your text right in there, your snippets, your customer service responses. It doesn't matter if they're long, short, could be an address, could be an email address, a phone number. The things that you type all the time that you need to make sure you get right, you put them into Text Expander and then you invoke them by either clicking or typing a short bit of text and out they come and boom, now you've got it. You don't have to dig into your email to find the last time you sent that customer service response. No, no, you've got it in text expander. It's exactly how you need it and you've already vetted it. So you don't have to proofread when you send out every email. It's awesome. And you can sync these amongst your devices and all the devices of your team members fantastic and like i said you visit textexpander.com slash podcast to get 20 percent off your first year it's awesome just go textexpander.com slash podcast our thanks to text expander for sponsoring this episode all right yeah if there's if there's one thing you can you want to do today to improve your business other than listening to this show is go sign up for text expander it'll it'll change your life it's, i agree it's awesome yeah, yeah it's awesome cool all right um so uh you know, I had a uh, I go to CES every year. Okay, out sure. in Las Vegas, and I'm not a gambler. I don't. Uh, well, you are a gambler, but just not in the casino. I would correct. argue <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, I take far more calculated yes. risks than putting money uh, on on uh, blackjack tables and things yeah, like that. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't. I you know what? It's funny. I don't find gambling fun because I start thinking about it like a business. And and I suppose if I did it as my business, that would be different. But it, it as a source of just entertainment, I don't find it fun. So sure. because of that, I've never thought to join the rewards program at the hotel where I normally stay, which is the Mirage. Happens to be one of the MGM hotels. So, you know, it's in that big group of, of lots of hotels in Vegas and, and beyond. For whatever reason, a couple of years ago, I joined their rewards program. I thought, well, I'm here. I join every other rewards program. Why haven't I joined this one? So I joined it 
and put, you know, told them to put my CES rooms. It turns out that, you know, because I bought a room for a, a, one of my staffers or whatever, I also got points for their room. And then we took the kids to Vegas last summer and I, uh, I looked and this was only after having stayed for like four or five nights, maybe so 10 nights, right? Five nights each. So I had booked 10 nights at this room. That's the only thing I had on my rewards program. It, this is like, like I booked our summer rooms two weeks after I got back from CES. So it, you know, that was the only thing on there. And I saved probably 30% on our rooms for the summer. Wow. Which was pretty good. Now, rooms yeah, in the summer in Vegas are cheap anyway, but I saved right. another 30%. So that was good. And then when we got back from CES this year, I thought, you know, um, they haven't opened up the the official CES block of hotels yet, right? So okay. um, I, I can't book for next year, but can I? I booked my room over the summer just on the Mirage's website. Can I go and do this? So I log in and I'm in my M life account. Well, now I'm like another tier up because I've stayed several times and, uh, and I looked and it was like, okay, well, this is interesting. When we, when we stayed over the summer, I was going to get two hotel rooms for the kids. Uh, you know, one hotel room for the yeah. kids, one hotel room for us. Uh, the kids are too big to try and share a room. And it's fine. Uh, or the kids can share a room, but just not the yes. four of us share a room. Correct. And like I said, rooms are cheap anyway, so it was fine. And I was going to book two rooms. And then I thought, well, what about a two bedroom suite? What's the difference for, f for whatever the four nights that we were there? It turned out it was about $150 more total last oh, summer wow. to book a two bedroom suite um, instead of two separate rooms. And that, of course, gets you a living room, a much nicer yeah, setup. Yeah. I mean, it's, a, yeah, it's way better. So I did that. And I looked at the same thing for CES and it was the same deal. It was a little bit more expensive because they know they can pr overprice the rooms at the beginning of sure. January. But the, 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 the sort of the Delta was the same. I could book two rooms or a two bedroom suite. And so I was, I always book four rooms for CES, even though if I don't use them all. So I booked two, two bedroom suites at CES. And again, there was some discount. Now I figured when CES announced the, their room packages they would be less and i'd probably we would cancel these suites that i booked and just book regular hotel rooms whatever it was uh, but you know you ha i had them in the bank ready to go well yeah, ces great. ces's rooms came out last week man and they were 50 percent more than what i would have paid through my system wow yeah and uh, and so I'm sticking with the suites, obviously, because, you know, yeah, sure. Yeah. Why not? And uh, and so that's what I'm doing. And none of this would have happened if I didn't join that rewards program. And, and you know, it's just I'm, I'm at this hotel once a year. I didn't figure I would earn enough points for it to matter. Like I, I would I figured I'd just be below whatever the number was that that, you know, got me any discounts or mattered in any way, shape or form. Nothing could have been further from the truth. So wow, that's awesome. Yeah. So I just I highly recommend even if it's your for especially if it's your first time staying at this, you know, at any given hotel or whatever, if there's a rewards program, if it's unless it's unless it costs you money, join it and make yeah. sure you get your credits applied. This is going to take you 10 minutes and maybe it'll pay off. Maybe it won't. But if you do it enough, the time you've spent joining all the stupid rewards programs will pay off for some of them. And that'll be enough. Yeah, that's true. And we've done a, a few episodes over the years about, you know, credit card reward programs and why they're so important to uh, getting you to that charmed life status that, that we're all looking for. Totally. Uh, but this is this is a really good point about private label, if you will, uh, uh, membership programs like for hotels and things. That's, yeah. that's a great, great idea. Yeah, man. It makes I, a lot of sense. It, and it, again, it's it's something that I would not have like. I mean, I, I did think of it to do, but. It's the kind of thing I would have just ignored. It, you yeah, know, in I, and I've done that. And even and I like to gamble. I mean, I like to play craps. Uh, I like you. I go maybe once a year. And but right. I do like to play craps, but I don't have there any uh, anything uh, or any illusion that I'm going to, you know, win a bunch of money. I'm just kind of paying for entertainment. Right. Uh, and, and I don't and I don't need to be entertained that long. So it's good. <laughs> But that's good. Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. It's a good, it's that, a great idea. That is the right way to think about it. I I've always said yeah. in Las Vegas, you can exist for free in Las Vegas unless you want to sit down. So if you want to eat, yeah. it, it's going to yeah. cost you money. 
if you want to gamble, it's going to cost you money. If you want to see a show, it's going to cost you money. And of course, if you want to sleep, it's going to cost you money. But otherwise, everything's free. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So gambling, cool. as long as you treat it like entertainment, it, it can be uh, cheaper or far more expensive than, say, going to see a show. You know, that's, yeah, that's yeah. right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You just have to set your limit. And say, OK, I'm going to spend this much and we'll see how far we get. And then if you leave when, you know, with some money, that's even, that's even better. Even better. So that's, cool. that's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Awesome. That's hey. a, it's a great bit of advice. Yeah, absolutely. Just don't forget to join those rewards programs. The other thing you can't forget is to get a domain name for your business. And that's where our second sponsor comes in. Go.co. Really, go.co slash SBS because you can register a .co domain for just five bucks and get three months of website builder and hosting services for free. Again, that's go.co slash SBS. We all know about .co domains because... It's what we do here at businessshow.co. <laughs> That's right. You've heard about this before, right? So, and the cool part is there's more than 2 million domains registered across the world through go.co. It's only two characters, so it makes it really easy to remember. And you have way better chances of getting the domain you want when you go with a .co domain. So go.co slash SBS. Again, that gets you $5 registration and three months of their website builder and hosting services for free. Very, very cool stuff. You know, Google uses it. G.co, campus.co, newly funded mirror.co, bird.co, and of course, businessshow.co. Be like us. Go to go.co slash SBS today. Our thanks to go.co for sponsoring this episode. All right, man. So the next thing up, I was reading, yeah. I read this, uh, this thing. I get it every two weeks. It's called bottom line personal. Sure. Yep. Yep. Uh, and it's always got interesting little snippets of information, right? And some of them are relevant to me and some of them are not. It's a very small little pamphlet kind of sized thing. And it's just, it's great. I read it while I eat my lunch is what I do. And, uh, and you know, I just, it's very bite-sized stuff. Well, there was a thing in there that talked about, uh, people that were going, it was an article about sharing your home with someone. And it was mostly geared towards people later in life, you know, like older folks, you know, 40 plus, which really isn't that old. Let's be clear. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, 40 plus and, and going to have a roommate. So, you know, established person, you know, you're not not in your 20s or whatever. You're not just getting going. Maybe in your 40s, you're still are getting going. That's OK. There's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, it was it was it was an article all about that. And one of the little sidebars talked about how to deal with making sure that these roommates that you were going to have or housemates or whatever scenario you're going to set up had the financial means to participate in a way that was going to work for everybody. And it, you know, if, if you've got a friend or whatever, maybe you don't both want to share everything with each other about your finances, but you, you just want to say, yes, I can, I can contribute what's necessary for this particular arrangement. You don't need to know whether I'm a millionaire or not. It's irrelevant. You just need to know, yes, do I have enough? And I need to know, yes, do you have enough? And so, right. The, the advice was uh, you go to a financial planner, uh, a mm. fee based financial planner or someone that is skilled and uh, in a in a position where they're used to having fiduciary responsibility over you know people's finances and things like that. OK. Right. Yeah. So you each go to this person. Confidentially, you divulge your finances to this person. You pay them a fee to review your finances. You each tell them, you know, collectively tell this person, hey, uh, here's what it's going to cost to live. Here's what we expect. Here's what we, we are planning on contributing. And here's what might happen if there's some surprises and, and that sort of thing. And then confidentially, you show this person, you know, this this planner, all your details, and they kind of give you a yay or nay. Yep, you're both good or hmm, no, you're that's not going to work, you know, and then that's it. And then nobody needs to know if anybody's a millionaire or not. Doesn't matter. Yeah. You, right. Everything's good. And as I read I like this, it. I thought, holy crap, I would love to go back in time and do this with business partners. 
And I would definitely consider doing it going forward in time with business partners. What a great idea, because sometimes sometimes, you know, the person and then it's fine. Uh, But even if you know the person, if there's going to be financial responsibility, either that you need to contribute money to the business or even more importantly, if it's a business where you are jointly deciding you don't want to take cash out. Well, yeah. Okay, but I need to know that you can afford to spend the time on this business that we both have said we're going to spend without getting any cash out. Right. That happens a lot when you're starting a business, especially when, you know, later in life. Right. You you get yourself, you're established and everybody says, oh, yeah, I can do it. And I've been in scenarios where that doesn't necessarily play out the way everybody says initially. I've also been in scenarios where everybody says, yeah, no, we're, we're, this is a cash cow. We need to take cash out. You know, the first distribution needs to happen within X number of months. Otherwise, I can't do this. That's fine, too. There's nothing wrong yeah, with that. Just as long as you know what you're getting into. Yeah, right? it's just yeah. managing expectations and getting everybody yeah. on the same page. So this is one of those things that as soon as I saw this idea, it's like, you know, you'd pay somebody a couple hundred bucks at most. Right. To, you know, to review the information. Actually, it probably would be two or three hundred bucks is what I would guess. Uh, what you would pay somebody, but man, the peace of mind of that, if, you know, if you're getting into business with someone that you sort of know, but you know, you don't know enough about, man, that would be talk about saving. Yeah, it would be good. And, and, you know, you could, you could really kind of wrap it into like part of the working agreement that you said, okay, we both agree we're going to use, uh, Maybe maybe you have to have this independent and it's almost like a financial escrow service, if you will, where you're going to submit these documents and you lay it out in the working agreement. We're going to submit tax returns and a financial statement to this independent third party. And they're going to be able to say yay or nay based on these conditions. You know, can this person meet this you know condition? Because it. I, yeah, I still think it's need. right. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's going to be a tough conversation if they come back and say no. Uh, to one one party or another, but it's that's maybe a better conversation to have early on than Dude, later that's, when that's way easier problem. than six months down the road or 18 months down the road. And I can say that from personal experience. Yeah. And I'd yeah. rather not talk about it any more than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, we've all been there. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just, I mean, it, you know, these things good happen. Idea. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. 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 That's yeah. a great idea. So that's no, really cool. Yeah. That's good. Uh, so, we have a, a listener question here today on a, on a really important topic. Uh, do you want to jump into that at first? Do you want to do our, our yeah, yeah, ask uh, the question? Let, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Ask the question, then I'll so, talk about our 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 final sponsor. As perfect. We okay, so we, we got a, a great question uh, during the past week from Ronnie S. and and you can send in questions feedback at businessshow.co. Uh, we'd love to, you know, hear and try to help you any way we can. Um, so Ronnie writes, Wait, is that, first, did you say yeah. feedback at business show dot co? Is that I right? did. OK, I did good. say that. I'm yeah, just making feedback. sure. Yep. Feedback business show dot co. Perfect. So so Ronnie writes uh, first. Thanks for doing the show each week. I've learned a lot and I put we've put into practice many of the techniques you've discussed. That's awesome. Thank you. Uh, my question. We are a small company, less than eight employees. I'm concerned about making sure we don't have any issues with sexual harassment. Since we're small, we all work closely together. And I'm worried that if we don't address the issue before it happens, it could be a big problem down the road. Any suggestions for the best way to handle this type of situation? Okay. That's a great question. That's a great question. And, you know, one place you could go to get an answer for this is our next sponsor, which is the alternative board. At the alternative board.com slash SBS. The idea behind the alternative board is you're running your business. You're alone, right? You don't necessarily have a board of directors that aren't in the day to day operations of your business, but you know, it, there to answer questions there to guide you. That's what the alternative board is about. S- a group of people, what they do is they put together Up to 10 local non-competing business leaders. You get together each month, plus you get one-on-one business coaching. But when you get together with these folks, you know, you can talk about things like what are you folks doing about sexual harassment? What are you folks doing about how to manage your teams or marketing your business or hiring or resources? And because they're local, they might have some 
you know, uh, geographically uh, direct advice for you. And that's fantastic. It really makes a difference when you can go and talk to other people, talk with other people about not only your business, but their businesses, hearing what other problems people have might help guide you. You might be able to help guide them. It's a fantastic idea. And the alternative board, or like they like to call it tab is a great resource. So you got to go check this out. And again, there's a special URL so that they know we sent you. Go to thealternativeboard.com slash SBS today. Find out if there's a tab board seat available in your area. It's really quick to do and there's nothing to lose. Thealternativeboard.com slash SBS. And our thanks to The Alternative Board for sponsoring this episode. All cool. right, man. So how do we answer this question? Yeah, so so Ronnie is, you know, uh, worried about uh, a harassment situation that might come up and, you know, do they need to have some sort of policy in place? And, and in fact, uh, you do need to have some policy in place. Uh, now, a, on a federal level, it's 15 or more employees uh, you're required to have a formal policy. But you need to also check with your state because states like California, no surprise, uh, you need to have a policy if you have one employee. No and kidding. I, I, yeah. And I would actually suggest that having a policy, I mean, th this is a good thing to have as kind of part of your employee manual. If it's not already in there and you, if you, if you don't have an employee manual, there's some great resources. You can just, you know, search online for that. Um, you know, there's some free resources and there's some paid ones, yeah. but uh, you know, you're, you're better off just having some kind of policy, but you know, I would say the first thing you need to do is learn yourself about exactly what constitutes harassment. And, you know, up on the uh, U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission on their website, they have a really nice, very succinct, which is surprising to me, uh, for a government agency that they just have some bullet points. This is harassment. This is this, you know, and uh, gives you some uh, some really good uh, guidelines, if you will, on what constitutes harassment. I would I would take a look at that and we'll put the link uh, to the EOC website in that page in our show notes. Um, and a lot, the other thing they have up there on the EOC website is a great uh like a Q&A, if you will, to help you learn more uh, about it, how to, you know, what to look for and, and different things. And I would suggest you take a look at that. Um, once you've educated yourself a little bit, you do need to implement some kind of anti-harassment policy. Uh, and so you want to establish one and you can, we'll link to, there's some great templates online that uh, you can fill out based on your business. Most of them are free. Um, again, there's some fancier ones as part of manuals that you can pay for, but you're required to establish a policy, distribute it and enforcement uh, and enforce it at, at your business. And I think it, you know, it's great to have on the books. I don't think you need to, you know, it's not something you need to talk about every day, but it does need to be there as a resource for your employees. Um, and I think as I was looking in and doing some research for Ronnie's question, one of the things that really stuck out to me is that perhaps the most important aspect of it is you have to set up a procedure for how to make a complaint so that oh. someone would be comfortable, right? It's not enough. You just have this policy and this and this, but what do you do? Who do you talk to? Um, you know, where do you go and to know that, oh, this is really going to be taken seriously and I can go here and I can feel protected, you know? Um, and, Again, props to the to the EOC. They they really point out a lot of interesting things. You know, it's like it, it doesn't necessarily have to be between opposite sexes to have you know that harassment. It could. I mean, there's just so many uh, little nuances to it that uh, it's it's definitely worth your time reading. Um, it's it's so, true. H have you ever had to deal with anything like this? You know, uh, I have had to deal with things like this. We had a. a a UPS driver that it was, it wasn't any one of my own employees, but it was a UPS driver that was uh, harassing, you know, one of our warehouse workers. Sure. And it was interesting to see how quickly and uh, serious it was taken by UPS. Uh, and, you know, 
needless to say, we never saw that driver again. Right. Um, I, I had this issue. Um, thankfully, I caught it before a complaint was ever lodged, which that's great. You know, yeah. Right. But but to your point, it was a very strange thing. It took me a little while to to realize I, there was a, a recurring thing that was happening and it made me uncomfortable each time, but I couldn't put my finger on why, you know, right away. It was just like, well, you know, people are weird and I'm in the tech business and we have people that are, you know, their social graces aren't uh, <laughs> honed yeah, like, I, say, like I, say a exactly. salesperson's would. Right. Oh, of, course, of course. You know, it's just how it is. And it's totally yeah. fine. We're all weird. Yes. It's great. And, you know, you work with people for a long time. We tend to keep our employees for a very long time. So, you know, you learn more about people as time goes by, just in a normal way. Uh, yep. And and there was this one person. A guy uh, who would um, often at our staff meetings say things to other guys. Now, he huh. it, the, 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 the guy who would say things. Is at least on the surface, you know, a straight guy. I, I, yeah, okay. I mean, I don't know more details than that, but you know, based on the the, the things that he shared, it, one would assume he was straight. You know, but whatever, fine. He would say things to other guys like, "Oh, that shirt looks really nice on you," or "I like the way you have your hair today," or you know, "That beard looks makes you look good." And I started like it never it just rubbed me the wrong way. And it wasn't I mean, he would say these things to me sometimes, okay. and, but other people as well. And every time it was like, huh. And then I stopped and thought about it. And I thought, you know, if he said to a woman here, that shirt looks really good on you today. Same thing that he said to a guy. It, he would never have said that to a woman, you know, because. Uh, he would he would have seen that as potentially, uh, you know, crossing the line yeah. into sexual harassment. Right. You know, whatever for whatever. Reason. Yeah. And I it, it hit me. I was like, wait a minute. This I, I, there's no reason that this is gender specific. Yeah. Right. It yeah, doesn't exactly. matter. Doesn't and matter. It yep. doesn't matter. And I and so I, I took him aside and I'm like, hey, I think this might be like no one's reported it. I just want to head it off at the pass. So I'm telling you, I think this might cross into that area and I need yeah. you to stop, you know? And Good as soon you. as I yep. said it to him, he was like, oh, you're totally right. Like, I, yeah, I never thought great. about it that way. And it's like, no, I get it. It took me a while to think about it that way, too, you know? Yeah. But, but it, it is something that couldn't it made me feel uncomfortable. I, I can only assume that it could make someone else feel uncomfortable, too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as a manager, supervisor, business owner, um, if you pick up on those things, you know, you may need to have that discussion. And, you know, you don't want to create an environment where everybody's so paranoid. They can't oh. even say, hey, I love I like that shirt. Like, that's cool. Nice shirt. You know, whatever. That's very but, different yeah. than that shirt. Yes. Looks good on looks you. good on you. <laughs> that is very it's different. Too very, even though the yes. sentiment may be exactly uh, the same. One right. is creepy and one is not. Correct. <laughs> Correct. A little, yeah. 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 Uh, and, you know, one of the things, uh, again, I, that I was shocked to see up on the, the uh, Equal Employment Opportunity website is that in order for it to be considered harassment, I mean, it seems very basic, but it says the harasser's conduct must be unwelcome. Yeah. Oh, isn't that interesting? Oh, my God. Yes. Why do they and have so, that on there? Like, I don't know. That seems that like was, the worst thing yes. in today's climate. Oh I God. would agree. <laughs> and I saw this and I said, well, I guess it kind of makes sense, right? Because you're 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 trying to set some standards mm -hmm. to where people can still be, you know, humans and friendly. And yes, uh, over time, you kind of create this tight knit culture, right. uh, hopefully, that is focused on succeeding and people enjoy it and that kind of stuff. And um, being able to say, hey, 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 today uh, is a good idea. Hey, uh. Shannon, your mic just cut out in a real. Yeah, I noticed way. that. Okay, I noticed that. Everything We're good. back though, right? Uh, yeah, I yeah, think everything's fine. good. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good. So I, I, I always struggle with. I want, I'm very complimentary, and it is on how in the framing of how you say it. Yes. Um, and oh, I like to. You know, I like your new haircut. You know, something like that. Great. You know, and we should be able to compliment each other. But if you say, "I like your new haircut." And you see somebody kind of cringe or look uncomfortable or someone mentions to you, hey, man, I wouldn't say that to that person. 
you need to stop. Then you just need to stop. Yeah, right. Just and don't stop. don't take it personally. Don't get defensive no. about it. And and you as the manager, owner, you know, employer, when you deliver these things to people, especially if in like in the scenario I had, if you notice it before a you know a problem is on the table, but even if a problem is on the table, you know it's best if you can deliver this correction in a way that is not adversarial, right? Correct. Like, yeah, that's hey, really important. I need yeah. you. It's and it's that whole that concept of you know, are you across the desk from each other or are you next to each other? And I don't necessarily mean that physically, but that can that like body language means a lot here. It's but sure. it's, you're just like, hey, there's a thing, you know, that we have to be really hypersensitive to this sexual harassment thing these days. And I'm in agreement with that. I think you are, yeah. too. Yes. So, look, I need you to look at this from in that light. I need you to look at a comment like this. And, and you know, as I explained in my scenario, as I explained this to this guy, I was like, now let's replace, you know, Tim with Tina. Would you say the same thing? And he's like, oh, no. And it, I right. didn't have to go any further. He's like, whoa, I never thought yeah, about it sense. that way. Yeah, it's a I'm great example. You. Great. Yeah. No problem. And it was it. I mean, I was bringing it to him, but he decided on his own that this was the right course of action, you know, to to curb this. And it was like, great. Awesome. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah it's way I, better. I, I think the, the real important takeaway here uh, for all of this is having a, a very open and and strong communication system in place in your company. It's true. And true. that is going to be critically important for both th- both sides, where if you have to mention something to somebody like you were just describing, Dave, or if someone's uncomfortable about the way they're being treated or things are being said, they need to have that clear, concise channel to mention it. Because often I, I think that people are like, well, I, I don't want to get this person in trouble. Right. And yeah. or whatever. It is. But 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 if you have this, pol- this, you know, a clear policy, you've talked about it and be like, hey, everyone, you know, if anybody's uncomfortable, this is how you do it. You know, just come talk about it. We're going to get to the bottom of it. Uh, and uh, I, I would say that it would also be beneficial if you had some sexual harassment training and we'll put some uh, links in the show notes and. Uh, and there are some online courses you can take uh, and you can have your employees take. It's they're like, you know, I found some from 20, 30 bucks could be the best money you'll ever spend. Um, but check them out. You know, we, we don't recommend them because uh, we don't have a lot of, uh, you know, further details about them, but they're available online. Um, and we will link to the EOC website, uh, some other articles that talk about how to create a policy and the things that need to have in there um, and some templates and things. But you know, that communication is is crucial for every aspect of it. And, you know, that is very important. The conduit to where somebody can come to and also that you can, you know, reach out and speak to someone if, if you see a potential problem. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. People need to feel comfortable talking it, it, no matter what. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I will, I will share a story. You know, you mentioned that if you've ever had this happen before and I, I had a business partner very early on in my career, great guy, super smart, but not very smart when it came to, uh, this kind of thing and used to send around inappropriate emails, uh, that, you know, he thought it was okay just cause he was sending it to the guys. Sure. Right. And even though I talked to him and said, listen, <laughs> you know, you can't do it. Can't he do just that. didn't see a didn't see a problem with it. So I went and I talked to our attorney because, you know, our, our, this business was growing very fast and I didn't want to have any problems. So not only did we implement some kind of procedure, sat this guy down, especially as an owner, you don't have to pull any punches. Right. You're like, no, look, look, you dude, shouldn't look, dude. have to. That's right. Y- y- yeah. yeah, you can't yeah. do it. But we also, you know, because he didn't quite even you know, grok what was going on. Yeah, you know, we we got a sexual harassment insurance policy, um, which was surprisingly not that expensive. Um, because my attorney said, "Hey, if you get a claim over this, you're going to pay a hundred thousand dollars, like no matter what, instantly. Wow. It's going to cost you a hundred grand because the, uh, you know some other attorney's going to sue you. You're going to have to either settle or we're going to fight it and this kind of thing." And he's like, "You know, you might as well get." get this policy. And, and it wasn't that it was actually through Lloyd's of London. Oh, um, no it kidding. It was not. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It was not that expensive compared to ev- everything. I think it may have been, I don't know. Uh, I, I think it was less than a thousand bucks a year. 
and so I thought it was a, a good investment at the time. And, uh, you know, I'm no longer business partners with that guy, <laughs> but, okay, and I don't fair. know if he's still doing that, but it was just, it was really interesting to me that when I described why it was a bad thing, he, he's like, well, I'm only sending it to the dudes. And we were young, you know, we were like in our early twenties yeah, and fast growing. And I was like, no, no. And email, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm an old man now. So email was like, New. Everybody had email at their desk. It was kind of new. And I said, yeah. Hey, you know, we're, we're responsible for this stuff. And he's like, well, it's no big deal. I say it is a big deal. So it anyway, could be, nothing. Yeah, it is isn't until it is. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you could easily have that case, uh, a sexual harassment claim filed against you by one of the so-called dudes that you're sending it out to that guy, well, you know, course, this, if this they're idiot. offended by some of offensive thing that somebody Correct. sends out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's right. like, Hey man, this is not funny. You want to laugh about this in your private life or joke around. You can't send these kind of things out. I, uh, I, on, on I committed that uh, indiscretion when I was actually at Citibank. Uh, back in the must have been the early 90s, I, you know, again, email was new. I was the tech guy, uh, you know, but but had people that were older than me that I worked for and worked with and all this stuff. And for whatever reason, I thought it was a good idea. That whole John Wayne Bobbitt thing was going around and the pictures oh, yeah. came out. For whatever yeah. reason, I thought it was a good idea to share You're these young. pictures. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. What a terrible idea it was. Now, thankfully, you know, I sent it to the three or four people, maybe maybe it was five or six, that I worked with. And one woman came to me and she was like, this is not OK. You yeah. cannot yeah. send this to me. Now, she was cool about it. Uh, right, she was right. older than me, like by probably 20 years. You know, she had seen it all. She had been in business. She was tough as nails. And she loved the work that I did. Like, definitely we had respect for each other, but she was like, this is not who you want to be. And I yeah, was like, good for you her. Yeah. You are Edu totally educating you. Yeah, yeah. She, she schooled me for sure. Yeah. In fact, no, even telling great. the story hurts a little bit, but that like, yeah. it was a, it was a good lesson. It was a, it's a good scar to have. It was like, oh, yes. Right. Yeah. She, she was yeah. totally right. I couldn't say, no, it's fine because it wasn't right. fine. It was just a stupid thing that I did. I was like, okay, yes, yep, yep. all right, yeah, for sure. So, yeah, so you know, uh, uh, Ronnie, we really appreciate you sharing that because uh, it gives a, gr a great topic to discuss here, and uh, these kind of things are really important. You want everybody to feel comfortable. Uh, you want to have great communication in your company. That's how you build a great culture, and uh, you know, those people are they're. The critical part of your business, they make everything happen. So you want to uh, keep an eye out for them. For sure. way. Uh, and we, again, we'll put some uh, really good links in the show notes. Uh, and, you know, it, we really appreciate you listening this week. Thank you for listening to our sponsors. We try to pick out people that we think you'll find useful and that we use ourselves. Uh, if you'd like to help the show out, go to businessshow.co slash review and click the link up there and go leave us a review. That helps other people learn about us and we would appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks so much again. Links for our sponsors, textexpander.com slash podcast, thealternativeboard.com slash SBS, go.co slash SBS, and uh, like Shannon said, businessshow.co slash reviews. We'll, uh, we'll take care of that. We would love to see your reviews. It really means a lot. And, uh, and really helps us too. So please, please do that. And, awesome. Uh, yeah, that's it. We'll, uh, I guess we'll see you, uh, see you next time. See you, see you next week. Thanks, everybody. That's it.